Uh, next on the agenda, and we've got the we've got three governors. Where you guys want to stay? Where you're at? This is our structures work group update. Everybody okay where they're at? All right. Who's going to take the lead? I will. All right. So uh, yes, I'd like in the interest of time. I know we're about a half an hour over now, and so um, what I think would be the most effective would be a quick update on the two meetings, not go over what we did before, um, provide those two meeting updates, and then I throw it back to to. Governor Abel or Governor Clark or Governor Swiegel, and they can um, add detail um, and then ask for questions because I think that would be more most effective given the time that we've got. The uh, last time we met in Yakima, we gave an update on what we had done up until that point. We've had two meetings since that time, and they've been very interesting meetings. That the second to last meeting we as a group decided that the structure as it currently sits is proper probably the optimum structure for our bar, bar association and there was no need to um, bifurcate or adopt a hybrid uh, governance system based on fleck based on janice and the and the dental case and, and the uh, lawsuits that have been filed around the country and we did that after much deliberation and consideration of experts and folks that were invited in to talk to us and then we spent a considerable amount of time talking amongst ourselves um, of the work groups and, and, and figuring that out. That was the second to last meeting. At the end of that meeting, we also decided that perhaps a more robust Keller analysis, perhaps with an audit, um, perhaps with an opt-in approach, would be something that uh, would give us a, a more security and something we should do anyway. Um, Keller is still the law of the land. Everybody is satisfied with that. But we wanted to make sure that um, we were doing things, If we're sure we're doing things right. But we might want to go further, be more conservative in our Keller approach. And so we left that meeting um, asking who should do that. And some people voiced opinion that it should be the Bar Association. Some people thought maybe it could be a, an expert um, called in to address just that issue. Uh, some folks thought it should be the work structures work group. And we came out of it hesitantly for some, excited from others, that it would be the structures work group. And then we received an email from uh, Chief Justice Fairhurst after she had met with the Supreme Court in Bonk, and they had the Supreme Court members had questions regarding whether that was outside of our charter. And so she asked us to reconsider that, and we did so at the first part of the, the last meeting. And we've decided not to go forward with that. And I wish um, Governor Grabicki was here right now because I'm sure he's going to have some comments on this. So we'll circle back to him in a minute when he comes back into the room. Um, we did entertain motions, and there were three motions that um, that well that passed. Um, one motion was to revisit the 2014 Governance Task Force report and see if there were issues within that Governance Task Force uh, report that could be implemented. There was a motion that passed uh, to confirm that we would not be bifurcating the Bar Association, that we would maintain the unified bar, and that there would be no hybrid um, consideration, at least from purposes of the uh, Structures Work Group. And then the third motion, and that one passed as well, and then the third motion that passed was a motion to put two public members on the Board of Governors. And so that will be going to uh, the AOC to draft up in a report. It will come back to the Structures Work Group for review, and then it will be sent to the Supreme Court. There's no more meetings planned right now for the Structures Work Group. Um, and so that's where we sit. And again, I, I'm, the, the point that I think Governor Grabicki would be interested in is where, where does that leave us? should we pick up the baton to take a look at the more robust Keller um, 
analysis. And maybe that's separate and apart from the structures work group, but I think it's worth some discussion and uh, deliberation regarding that. And speak of the devil. <laughs> Governor Grabicki. I was going to say if we hurried, we could finish this before he got back. <laughs> uh, um, it, it, I'll let you, f when you finish your comments, Kyle, let me know. And I'll be real brief, just to, to back up just a moment. Um, just gave a, um, a summary of what happened with the structures work group. And then I was getting into what can the Bar Association do go Am I still on? going forward with regard to the Keller deduction, the opt-in uh, idea, whether the, the task force that the Bar Association had prior to the Structures Work Group should be reconvened, what kind of um, input should we have on making sure that our Keller approach is robust, perhaps involving an audit and whatnot. And, and I mentioned you, Governor Grabicki, because I know you have an interest in that. But before we go back to you, I did want to throw it back to Governor Clark and Governor Swiegel and Governor Abel for further detail or discussion on things that I might have missed. You're going to be a great president because you actually read my mind. So we'll start with Hunter if you have any gaps to fill in there for us. Well, thank you. Um, the only addition I think I have, Kyle, and correct if I'm wrong, is I think there was one other motion that passed, and that it, was... Excuse me. Um, Brian just emailed me that he can't hear. I don't know if the mic's turned down up there or Everybody, something like that. Yeah. So, Brian, can you hear, can you hear this right now? Check, you, check. Is this clear? Brian, can you hear me? Hello, Brian. Bill, you're always clear. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, Hunter, speak closer to the mic, and I think Kyle might have been backed up just a little bit. Okay, I'll try and talk a little bit closer. Um, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong. I think one other motion passed, and I admit this one's a little bit of a head scratcher um, for me. But if I recall correctly, a motion passed to um, recommend to the court that the court either recommend or direct that this organization engage in what was ultimately described as a thorough Keller analysis. Um, that was confusing to me because the language that I requested was uh, a uh, conservative Keller analysis, which was lifted verbatim from the recommendations from Michigan. But my recollection is that that vote passed, which was confusing to me. It looks like Sarah's raising her hand. Am I incorrect on that, Sarah? Well, I've cleared with Mary and with Dory the official kind of recap language of it. The, I, I believe what passed is it said recommendation to the court that they look at the current Keller process for transparency and defendability. Okay. That, okay. So which that, I, that's where it got to, you know, bringing it up, and it wasn't to this organization. What I understand was the recommendation is to the court to look at this Keller process in terms of transparency and defendability, as in what is it and is it defensible? Okay. See, that's interesting. That actually does not match my notes, but I think that illustrates, given the fact that it was my motion to begin with, <laughs> that there was some... Um, interesting developments about this discussion and how it unfolded. So there was that additional motion out there, but that's the only addition I have. Thank you. Thanks, Hunter. All right. Uh, just give us a moment here, Paul. Dan, any, anything else? Okay. All right. All right. I think that's the update from, yeah, I know. Paul, I can hear you, but I don't know if that, I can hear us. That's the update. Hey, can you guys the, not hear me? This is Paul. Yeah, I can hear you, Paul. That's the update from the folks who sat on the structures work group. Paul. I, I'm on the structures work group. Okay, you have something to add then. Go ahead, Paul. Yes, I do. Um, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, but a few meetings ago, we also passed a motion that essentially said that the structures work group members believe that activities related to uh, access to justice and diversity inclusion are essentially activities that promote the improvement of the practice of law and the administration of justice. Is that correct? That's, that's absolutely correct. That was two or three meetings ago where it was the first item of business, very important to most, if not all, of the folks on the work group. And so we took that one up early, and, and Paul is correct. We did pass that motion um, probably in May or June. Good. All right. And I think it's also important to understand the backdrop to that. 
there were folks, you know, essentially uh, all across, all around the table that felt like bifurcation would be, would lead to defunding or less funding and less support for diversity and inclusion and access to justice. But the folks, you know, who had that concern all wanted to vote and say, do we all agree that those things are part of improvement of the practice of law and the administration of uh, justice? And so that's why we held that vote. And it was, uh, I believe, unanimous, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Anything else, Paul? No, thank you. All right. Thank you. Back to Hunter, and then we're going to go to Alec. I'm trying to let the structures work group members. Okay. Yeah, just, just one quick clarification here. So this was Mark Johnson's motion um, about a grab bag of various entities and organizations within the WSBA, and the motion was that there be no change to these entities or organizations. That was the specific language as a result of Janus. So I, I do want to clarify that because there was some significant confusion in the room about what that motion was designed to do. I voted against it. A number of other people voted against it based at least in part on that confusion. But um, Mr. Johnson has been more than willing to clarify what his precise motion was and what the intent of it was. So I, I do want to clarify that. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Now, Alec, you, you, question for the work group. Yeah. Yeah, and I have my question before PJ because I just want to understand what you mean, uh, Kyle, or members of the work group, which is you use the term Keller opt-in, and what I want to know is what does that mean and how is that supposed to work? And I just wanted to understand that since I heard a term, but I'm not sure what's behind the term. So we don't know because we didn't get there. All we, 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 as a group, thought that we should get there, but we stopped short of deciding what that was until we could, the structures work group could meet again and figure out what, what that is, how we wrap our minds around it, how we get the bar association staff to help us with that because we can't do it without staff. Um, and then we pulled back. In my mind, the opt-in is, you know, we, we, we have a, a part of the Bar Association that might be ideological or political, and then instead of requiring our members to opt out, we opt in. They opt in. So they know what they're paying for when they're going into every year. But it's, all, it's just a concept at this point. And, my, and what PJ might be wanting to talk about is... How do we develop that? If that is even an idea that we want to look at, consider, um, consider whether it would even work. So that's the next step. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. Are looking around the table. Are you wanting to? You have in the in the queue, PJ. Okay. Ten words or less. Um, as Kyle pointed out, the uh, structures work group um, didn't get to the, the meat of the problem. Um, <clears throat> what I would suggest is that um, what we're going to be doing in budget and audit, um, going through all these cost centers and programs, is um, going to develop all the information that is going to be needed in order to determine if something is ideological or political. And therefore, if, if, if it were up to me, I would have that undertaken by that group. And if somebody who was on, who was on the structures work group from us is not in budget and audit, I would ask them to participate and maybe break those, those meetings out as a, as a special part of it. But I, I think that's the group that's going to be going to have enough information and going to have the staff support to be able to do that. And then when we are able to define what we think is political or ideological activity that's offensive of Janus, then um, we bring that report back to this body and have see if this body will endorse that and accept that. And once we've got that determination that's been ratified by this body, then we um, 
uh, engage an outside public accounting firm with specialized expertise in cost segregation and cost accounting, and those are specializations in the accounting profession, to um, take what we've identified as political or ideological activity or speech and determine what the cost of that is to come up with a Keller deduction that has been determined by these outside experts working with our staff and that gives us um, a very defensible Keller deduction um, and it also gives us our expert testimony when we have our litigation over this because we're going to get sued if, and we may want to institute a deck action ourselves um, so that we can control the litigation that's a decision for another day um, but and then we would get Will you to, add me to the queue please and then we would get to Kyle's yes. um, a concept of okay at that point we know that the real Keller cost is let's say $24 and 52 cents um, are you going to say to the lawyers on their little um, uh, license fee um, deal um, check the box if you uh, want to not pay that or are we going to say you've got to opt in and agree to pay that and that's we, we can have that discussion later but um, that's another nuance to the entire thing but to me that's how we ought to proceed and we ought to start with that with the fall meeting um, with fall meetings all right. Wow, I can't wait for the till the fall meetings. Um, <laughs> listen carefully. It's Alec and then Ethan, and I'm looking around the room for who and else wants in the queue because then we're moving on. Hunter. Okay, so Alec, Ethan, Hunter. So um, I want to make sure I understand what you said, but I want to make sure I understand it in the context of what I thought I heard reported regarding diversity, inclusion, and equity, and access to justice. My concern being that if the structures work group has reaffirmed that those are essential functions of the bar, I just want to be, I just want to understand and be clear that those who may think some of that is political does not get a back door to say, well, not really, as essential functions of the bar. Number one, I think those are essential functions of the bar. Number two, I think we should um, absolutely embrace the determination and resolution that the Structures Work Group um, came up with. Number three, I think those concepts are deeply embedded in GR12. Yes, so just in hearing the report from the members of the Structures Work Group, I'm a little bit concerned that the, there's a missed opportunity to really explore and examine governance, which is what I understood to be the original charge of the work group, and instead now we're talking about Keller. Uh, not Understanding the fact that I'm not sure what robust Keller means, that's a made-up term as far as I know, and I, no one's really providing an example outside of Northwest Lawyer, uh, I suggest save everyone a lot of time and administrative burden and create a Keller victim fund and deal with it that way. But this slice and dice, what's lean Keller or robust Keller, I think it's an artificial exercise that's not worth undertaking. Thank you. Who's next? Hunter, the final word for today. All right, there we go. So um, I, I guess kind of a, what I wanted to offer as a final word on this is I just wanted this group to know, for those who weren't able to attend, um, that this Board of Governors and this organization where it's extremely well represented on the group. I'm not talking about my contributions. Instead, I'm talking about the members of the Board of Governors um, Governor Spiegel, Governor um, Schicchetti, and Governor Clark, all of who have attended, but then also the staff who attended, um, which provided invaluable feedback for us. But then also Governor Grubicki was basically an honorary member of the group. As far as I know, he attended every meeting, and his feedback was um, really outstanding. So I think we can be proud of the representation that this group and this organization had on this um, organization. Thank you. And please, Hunter, add yourself because you are a governor-elect. <laughs> Thank you. So you are part of this group as this goes forward. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Paul.
Thank you very much.